How cool is it that with their new CD player, SMSL have decided to also give you a spare lid for your teapot? CD players and transports are making a bit of a comeback, and so I was curious to find out if it's actually worth getting in on the trend. To do that, I've grabbed a whole bunch of different CD players and CD transports all at once. And so today's video is really an episode one in a series of videos as I explore all sorts of different CD transports. We're starting off today with the SMSL PL200, which is a CD player and transport and DAC and digital to digital converter. If you don't know what those things mean, don't worry, I'll explain it all soon. And then I've also got a CD player and a CD transport from Shanling that I'll reference during this review and then also review them in isolation on their own merits. So if you want to join me to discover what the new wave of CD players and CD transports is all about, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. Coming back around now and focusing on the SMSL PL200, this is an incredibly versatile device and that raises a whole bunch of questions. I've tried to think of every possible variable I could in terms of how you might use this and I've tested every single one that I could think of. So let's jump in and start talking about the PL200 with a quick introduction, then straight into sound quality in all of its different operating modes. And then I'll come back around at the end and do things like device tours and my thoughts on its usability and how much I've enjoyed it as a device in my system. So the first question we have to answer is what is this and what can it do? On the surface, the SMSL PL200 is a 669 US dollar CD player and or CD transport. Now, if you don't know the difference between the two, a CD player is one where you put your CD in, you press play, and it has a cable coming out and going to your amplifier or your pre-amplifier, headphone amplifier, etc. The point is you're not running it via an external DAC. A CD transport is one where all the CD player is doing is outputting a digital signal and then that's going to be decoded by an external DAC. So the PL200 can do both. It can output an analog signal or a digital signal. It's also MQA-CD compatible if that matters to you. The DAC chip being used within the PL200 is the AK4499EX chip from AKM, which is a fantastic chip and has sounded good in everything I've tried with it so far. The PL200 also has a USB input, so you can use it as a DAC. And then you can also take that USB input and output it via the optical or coaxial outputs, making it a digital to digital converter. Finally, it also has Bluetooth. And so you can run high-res Bluetooth codecs such as LDAC, Aptex HD from say a smartphone into the PL200 and then use its onboard headphone amplifier or output the signal via the analog outputs and off to whatever you want to use. And so that's just a quick summary of everything the PL200 can do. And as you can tell, it's very, very versatile. And so let's move through now and think about all the different ways that you might want to use the PL200 in your system and find out if it's a worthwhile purchase for that kind of setup. Now, one of the first things that you might think about when talking about the PL200 is just using it as a CD player. Is it worth running this as a CD player instead of using ripped files from your hard drive or maybe streamed files from Cobas, Tidal, Deezer, etc.? For this test, I kept things pretty simple. I ran a CD in the CD player, outputting through the headphone output into the Mesa Elite headphones. And I've chosen the exact same album ripped from that same disc into my hard drive and played that via the internal DAC, so the USB input via the internal DAC of the PL200 and out the headphone outputs. So the only variables here are that in one version, the music is coming off the CD. In the other version, those same files are coming from a computer listening to Making Mirrors by Gautier, that being the album name. The first thing I noticed was there was a slightly different character to the sound from the CD versus from the computer. And specifically, I'd say the CD was just a little bit smoother sounding. It was equally resolving, so I'm not saying it was getting kind of muffled or rolled off, but everything just had a sense of a little bit more refinement to it, to my ears. The CD also brought a slightly better sense of imaging and space within the recording, but it is worth noting that this is going to depend a lot on the quality of the transport. And what I mean by the transport here is the quality of the computer that you're running it from, whether or not it's got optimized USB outputs of some sort, whether you're using a dedicated music streamer to then feed USB out of the streamer and into the PL200, all of that could change the sound. And therefore, the better the quality of the transport, the closer it's going to be between the transport and the CD playback. And ultimately, as I continue to try it more and more, what I would say is the difference is there in my particular setup running a generic USB output from the PC via an optical USB cable, which should in theory isolate any noise coming from the PC. Running in that particular setup, I do think the PL200 was just a little bit better, 
but not better enough that I think it makes enough difference to worry about. In other words, if you're not specifically drawn to CD playback, I don't see there being enough benefit when compared to ripped CDs on a hard drive. I don't see that being significantly enough benefit to make it worth the slight hassle of using independent individual CDs versus a whole library of music stored on a hard drive. But does it perform well as a CD player? Yes, absolutely. And so that begs the question, how does it compare against another CD player? If you're looking to have just a CD player that you can plug your headphones straight into, is the PL200 a good choice? Or should you maybe consider something like the Shandling EC Mini? The EC Mini is a much simpler device, it is just a CD player, and that comes in at $379 US versus the $669 US for the PL200. So obviously, if you're not looking for the extra features of the PL200, then from a price point of view, the EC Mini has it all over the PL200. But if you are interested in some of the extra features of the PL200, maybe you like the idea of adding its DAC functionality to the rest of your source chain, then you might be curious to know if this is a better CD player on its own compared to something like the EC Mini. And I probably should remind you at this point, I don't yet have all the B-roll footage of the EC Mini to show you here. And that's because the review is coming up for that one. It's not due just yet in the schedule. So make sure you hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell if you want to know more about the EC Mini from Shanling. For now though, what I did for this test was set up both of these players sitting on their own, not connected to anything else. And I played exactly the same CD, which was Gawara by Racha Yali Yali. And then I was listening via the 6.3mm output on the back of the PL200 versus the 4.4mm output on the front of the EC Mini. So some of you might immediately feel like the EC Mini had the advantage using a balanced output. Now I've done no research yet on the EC Mini. I don't know if that's a truly balanced output or just one of those convenience 4.4mm connectors that's actually connected to a single-ended output circuit. But either way, the end result was that the EC Mini wasn't quite as good as the PL200. Its sound was a little bit thicker overall, and the soundstage was also a little bit smaller. So everything it presented was kind of more within the forward space, whereas the PL200 opened it up just a little bit. The differences weren't dramatic, but it was enough that the PL200 was clearly the better listen from a direct headphone output standpoint. And so what that starts to tell us is that we've got a decent quality CD player and headphone output stage within the PL200. It's not to say that the EC Mini isn't also good, because I didn't yet have a baseline for just how good things like the internal DAC, internal headphone amp, etc. were on the PL200. And that's where we're headed. So the short answer is, if you're just looking for a CD player, the AC Mini might still be a good option. It's also portable, I didn't mention that before. It runs on battery power, this runs on mains power. And so depending on your use case, the AC Mini might still be the better choice. But as a starting point, the PL200 does clearly sound better. It's also a whole lot more expensive because it's got a whole lot more features. So again, remember to subscribe if you want to know more about the AC Mini. But for now, let's talk about a key feature of the PL200. I say a key feature in terms of the marketing. It's not a key feature to me. I don't really care about it, but some of you might. And that's the question of it playing back MQACD. And that begs the question, is MQACD any good? To test this, I went out and bought a specific MQACD. And that's Feel Like Making Live by Bob James. As I understand it, MQACDs have the regular CD files on there. So you can play them in any CD player, that bit I know to be true. And as far as I know, it's the full res, the normal CD quality version of the files that are on an MQACD. The idea though is that they've also got extra data that when put into an MQACD player like the PL200, that will unlock the MQA encoding and theoretically give you even better sound. Now, I'm personally not a fan of MQA via things like Tidal, but I thought it was worth checking to see if the MQACD did things a bit differently. And I'm going to cut to the chase and say that I don't think the MQACD version sounded any better or added anything that was over and above the normal experience, and if anything, I think it made everything worse. To me, the MQACD version sounded less resolving and warmer. Now, warmth and smoothness can actually be a positive thing, particularly with digital audio, because when you remove noise and issues and artifacts from the sound, often the result is a smoother sound, but it should be smoother with no loss of resolution. And yet with the MQACD, I felt like I was losing resolution. It was like, almost a bit like, and I'm exaggerating a touch here, but almost like going from cassette tape to CD, where you get that slight loss of resolution, that slightly kind of smoother sound, and I just felt like I was missing parts of the information. And by the way, how I tested this specifically 
was to run the MQA CD, so that being Feel Like Making Live by Bob James. I ran that in the PL200. I took a coaxial output from the PL200 into the Chord M scaler and onto the TT2, and then the headphone output of the TT2 into the Mesa Elites. And then I compared that exact same setup where I swapped out the PL200 and played it through the shit Erd. I'll talk about the Erd more in a minute. That's a CD transport. It doesn't have MQA CD. And so I was getting the non-MQA version of the exact same CD out into the exact same source chain of the M Scaler, TT2, and the Mesa Elites. And it sounded consistently better from the shit Erd. And that's actually a nice segue into the next test, which is to find out whether or not the PL200 is any good as a transport. For this testing, I actually had two different transports on hand. One of them was the shit Erd, which retails for $1,349 US dollars. And it's a dedicated CD transport, no player capabilities, just transport. But it's also a digital to digital converter, much like the PL200. And then the other one that I had here was the Shandling ET3. And that one comes in at $729 US dollars. So much closer between the Shandling and the PL200, whereas the Erd is a significant step up in price. For this test, I ran each of these transports with the coaxial output into the Chord M Scaler, TT2, and Mesa Elites. And I used the same track, obviously from a CD for all of them, and that was Senor Blues by Taj Mahal. Starting off between the Erd and the PL200, and it was tough to hear if there was really a difference. But I do think there was. As I went back and forth between the two, I felt like the symbols at the beginning of the track had just a tiny bit more clarity and a bit more space around them from the Erd than from the PL200. I also felt like the sound was just a little bit more refined. And what I mean by refined was it's still got the same level of resolution and detail, but just delivered a little bit more smoothly. So again, not smooth as in rolled off, smooth as in easy to listen to, better quality overall, but still just as much detail, just as much resolution. Part of the challenge here, though, was that switching devices required stopping the disc, removing the disc, loading the disc, waiting for it to spin up, and then finding the track that I wanted. And so it was very hard to do quick A-B comparisons. One of the things that you can do in those situations, though, is do more extended listening. And so as I tried both the Taj Mahal CD, but also some other discs, I started to find that more and more, it was the Erd that I was enjoying more. And in each case, what I was hearing was a greater sense of clarity, a greater sense of space around each of the sounds, and also probably a touch more dynamic to the sound as well, or dynamics, I should say. So a bit more energy, a bit more sense of liveliness to the sound. It was like everything was just easier to hear in its entirety. There was nothing obscuring any of the details, any of the dynamics. It was just all that out in front of me. Now, I have no idea how this is possible. I don't know enough about CD playback to give you a theory on why or how this should sound different, because on one hand, you'd say there's data being read off the disk. That's ones and zeros that are then getting spat out of the coaxial output and into the M scalar. So why there would be a specific difference there, I have no idea. The only things I can suggest is that maybe the conversion process of the data coming off the disk being turned into the voltage that goes out through the coaxial cable and into the DAC, maybe that's getting improved in the case of the ERD compared to the PL200. Maybe there's extra noise with it as it comes out of the PL200 compared to the ERD. I'm not sure. But it was very definitely better, more enjoyable to me when listening to the shit ERD. Having said that, the differences were small. I'm not for a second going to stand here and say that people should absolutely spend double the cost of the PL200 to buy the Erd, because I think you'd be better off in some ways to buy the PL200 and upgrade your DAC if you happen to need a better DAC, because you're going to get a bigger gain and a bigger shift out of a really nice DAC than you're going to get out of the difference between the Erd and the PL200. Hopefully that makes sense. It's a difference, it's an improvement to the Erd, but it's an incremental small improvement. For 600 odd US dollars, you can get a big shift by upgrading other components in your system, and it's going to be bigger than the difference here. Hopefully I've made that clear. And so coming down a step in price to something closer to the PL200, hooking up the Shanling ET3 in exactly the same way, so just running coaxial out of the ET3 and straight into the M scaler, the same as the PL200, comparing the $729 ET3 with the PL200, I was surprised to hear that I was actually preferring the PL200. The ET3 came across a little bit brighter, maybe a little bit more resolving, or maybe it's just a bit brighter. It was hard to separate those two. But again, I would also say that the differences were very, very subtle. 
All I can really say for certain is that as I went back and forth between the two, I consistently enjoyed the PL200 more. And that's often a really good test I find. You may not be able to identify specifically what's changing, specifically what's different. But if you find yourself just enjoying one more, and I don't mean enjoying the interface, that's a different story, I'll talk about that in a second. But if you just find yourself enjoying the music more from one of them on an extended listening session, then that's probably telling you that there's something different between them, and you should absolutely go with the one that you enjoy the most. And for me, that was the PL200. As I said, I feel like the ET3 just had a slightly brighter, slightly more kind of brittle sound in the treble. It wasn't bad, but compared to the PL200, the PL200 sounded more natural, more kind of refined and smooth to me. But it was very, very subtle, the differences. The fact that the PL200 is cheaper and that it has more features, in my opinion, is just a bonus. Now, I just said it has more features. I haven't explored the ET3 in full. I know the ET3 is not a CD player. It's only a transport, so it's only got digital outputs. I also know that it doesn't have DAC capabilities for that reason. But having said that, I do believe the ET3 does have some extra functionality, such as maybe streaming and maybe being able to have external files connected to it through something like a hard drive. So stay tuned, hit the subscribe button if you want to see the full ET3 review, because I haven't done my research yet on its full features and functions. But comparing it purely as a CD player slash transport up against the PL200, it's the PL200 that I like more, because it's a player and a transport and a DAC. I'll come back around and tell you if the ET3 can redeem itself in that review. And so now just quickly coming back to which ones I enjoy interacting with most, that was quite interesting. We're going to get to a device to us shortly, but one thing that's quite relevant here is that when you're using the PL200, it's got this kind of two-part teapot lid system. So you lift off this top lid, then you lift off this little magnetic securing puck that holds the disc onto the spinning motor. And that means that every time you want to unload and reload a disc, you've got to use both hands or you've got to kind of pick up the first lid, put it down, pick up the second piece, put it down. It's quite a kind of clumsy and fiddly system. And the Shandling ET3 uses a similar one. It's a single piece, but it's still a teapot lid style, and I'm not a fan. Whereas interacting with the shit Erd in terms of loading discs is an absolute joy with a high quality tray loading mechanism. And so what I'd say is that from a loading and unloading discs point of view, the Erd is clearly the best in my opinion. But in terms of the interaction of the interface, it's actually the PL200 that I like the most. It's very responsive. I like the display. I love the new control wheel. There's a bunch going for it. And so I'm a big fan of the PL200 as a CD transport, particularly knowing everything else that it can do. And so with that in mind, let's talk about what else it can do. And the next thing that we have to talk about is the DAC. And so this raises the question, is the DAC in the PL200 any good? And to test that, I put it up against SMSL's own SU9. The reason I chose the SU9 is that it also runs the AK4499EX, that being the DAC chip. And so I was very curious to see if this was essentially a shrunk down SMSL SU9 with a CD transport attached to it. The SU9 Ultra comes in at $500. US I reviewed it just recently if you want to know more about that one. And so for this test, what I did was run USB input into both of them, take XLR outputs from both of them, and feed those into the Burson Soloist 3XGT. So we've got a really high-end headphone amplifier, again driving them as elites. And then I switched the same track between the two different DACs to see what I'd hear. And it was fairly evident straight away that the SU9 Ultra is the better DAC. And that does make sense. The SU9 Ultra is just a DAC. It's not trying to do any of the DDC functionality, that being digital to digital conversion. It's not trying to be a CD player or CD transport. It's got no headphone stage built in. It's just a DAC. That's all it's trying to do. And for that reason, I think it's able to focus all of its circuitry on being the best possible DAC that it can at that $500 price point. And it definitely shows. It's not to say the PL200 DAC is bad, it's actually very, very good. But my point here is if you're just looking for a DAC and you don't really need the CD transport, then I don't think you should buy the PL200 just in case you might want CD one day. If you know that it's going to be 99% working as a DAC for you, get the SU9 out of these two in front of us here. Specifically, what the SU9 Ultra was able to do over and above the PL200 was provide a better, sharper image focus and also better separation and a little bit more resolution as well. It's possible that the SU9 Ultra was also giving a greater sense of dynamics. 
a bit like what I described from before with the shit Erd and the PL200, I feel like things were just a bit more lively, a bit more energetic, while still maintaining a sense of refinement, of course. And so this is a situation where I think the differences here were more obvious than, say, comparing the PL200 with the Erd and the ET3 from Shanling. Those were kind of small incremental differences that were kind of tough to tell sometimes in a quick AB comparison. However, with the SU9 Ultra and the PL200, I think it was a clear and obvious difference. It's enough that, as I said before, if you know you want just a DAC, you should absolutely buy the SU9 Ultra. This is not as good, but it shouldn't be as good because it's doing so much more and you're not paying a whole lot more for it. On the other hand, what I would also say is that the PL200 is good enough that if you buy this as your starting point and then you're looking for an upgrade of DAC, I would probably suggest going beyond the SU9 Ultra in terms of your DAC choice. Go to something like a Shelly Labs J2S for a really big step up in sound because the PL200 is close enough already that spending another $500 on top of it to add the SU9 Ultra as an external DAC, I don't think is going to net you enough gain. So what I guess I'm saying here is that if you want a DAC first and foremost, the SU9 Ultra is the better choice. But if you want to start with your CD player slash transport and add a DAC later, I think the PL200 is getting close enough to the SU9 Ultra that you should go beyond it when you want to upgrade over and above the DAC in the PL200. Hopefully I've made that clear. And so we've now got one final question to answer here before we get to a device tour, talk about some of the features and functions that I might not have touched on yet. And that's to just check how good is the headphone stage within the PL200. Should you buy this to drive headphones direct or is it worth adding an external headphone amp? So for this test, I took the PL200 and I tried it playing direct from the headphone output on the back and then also running XLRs out of the PL200 and into the very affordable shit Midgard headphone amplifier. The Midgard comes in at $219, making it very, very affordable, but it's also very good, as I just said recently in my review of it. And so running both of those headphone options, the internal option and the Midgard, and listening to Dedication by Jamie Woon, it was a very clear improvement moving over to the Midgard. I was using the XLR output on the front of the Midgard, which does give its best sound, and it was very clear that there was an improved sense of separation and refinement from the headphone output of the Midgard. That's not to say that the output from the PL200 is bad, but you can clearly upgrade for not too much money. To give you a little bit more clarity on the comparison between the two, the Midgard sound had exactly the same tonality as the PL200, so neither was particularly bright or particularly warm. They're both very good kind of neutral slash natural headphone amps. But the Midgard just does everything better in a technical point of view. It separates the image out better. It focuses the image better. It gives you a larger sense of soundstage and everything's just a bit smoother and a bit more refined. Again, refined and smoother in the sense of better quality sound, not rolling off details, smoothing out details. The resolution was as good, if not better from the Midgard, but it was delivered with a greater sense of refinement. And so what this tells us at this point is that the PL200 is a bit of a Swiss army knife for better and worse. It's probably not the best at any one thing that it does, but everything that it does do, it's doing exceptionally well given its price and all the features that it comes packing. I think its CD transport is as good as the Shanling ET3. I think its CD player functionality is better than something like the AC Mini. I think its DAC is almost as good as the SU9 Ultra. And I think the headphone stage is solid, but not great when compared to a $200 headphone amp. And that's generally a common story. When you start sharing chassis with multiple things going on in them, a mixture of digital and analog, having lots of different things sharing the same circuit board, it's very hard for the engineers to optimize each individual circuit. And I think that's what we're seeing here. But I also think they've done an incredibly good job at getting it as good as it could possibly be. And so I think the PL200 is absolutely fantastic for all that it does and how good it sounds. And that brings us around now to doing a quick tour of the device in case you're thinking of picking one up. Having a quick look at the PL200, the first thing I'm going to say is I love the design. I'm just going to take this lid off because it makes lots of noise. I love the design of the new SMSL gear with this kind of front ripply wave design underneath the screen. I like the new control wheel, which is way better than the old black one with the beveled edge. I just think it's a really beautiful setup. SMSL have also made a big deal about the fact they're using mechanical switches for these buttons. I don't think that really matters too much. They do feel good 
but I don't necessarily know that they're better than any other kind of button that I've used. A good feeling button, whether it's mechanical or some other system, doesn't really matter too much. I should clarify that when I say mechanical, these are like the mechanical switches on a keyboard specifically. And so they do feel nice, they're very tactile, they're very clear when you've pressed them or not pressed them, but I don't think that's really that much of a selling point, not to me at least. I also think the interface is excellent. This is nothing new. SMSL have been doing good, solid interfaces for a while, but I like the fact that this is just a clean white display. It's not doing all of the different fonts and different colors that some of the other devices have done, and I think that's definitely an improvement. On the top of the device, I've already talked about the teapot style lid and specifically this two-part design that I really don't like. For those wondering, you can't start the disc without the lid going on unless you physically press and hold. I don't know if you can see on screen here, there's a little brass button that gets pressed down by this top lid. So you can press that down with your finger and make the disc spin and theoretically start playback, but you'd have to actually sit there and hold it the whole time or find some way to physically keep it down there. And I'm not sure what that's going to do to CD playback. I had to draw the line somewhere in terms of my testing, so I haven't tested that out. On the back of the device, I've already mentioned the 6.3mm headphone output. I'm not a fan of that. I think they should have put the headphone output on the front. I know it wouldn't have looked quite as pretty, but for those of you that want to sit this in a rack or in a stack on your desk, for instance, like I do, it's a real hassle having to reach around the back to connect and disconnect headphones. On the other hand, what is good is that within the menu system, you can switch that on and off as you need to. So you can leave headphones plugged in all the time, and they're not going to get blasted if you're using the preamp outputs, because this will be off then. Speaking of the preamp outputs, we've got XLR and RCA outputs, and those can be a fixed line output or a variable line output. We've then got coaxial out and optical out, and the cool thing here, as I've already talked about, is this is a digital to digital converter. And so what that means is that it will run both the CD playback output through those, and then on top of that, you can also have it run whatever's coming through the USB that will also consistently and continuously be fed out through the coaxial and the optical. And I like the fact that you don't have to switch this on and off. It's running all the time. So if you want to have this connected up and maybe you're running your headphone output direct from the CD player and or the internal DAC, but then you also want to have this connected and running out to a really high quality DAC and two channel speaker setup, for instance, you can absolutely do that. And you don't have to constantly be switching between the headphone output and the say coaxial output. All you do is you leave it set up all the time, you switch on your external DAC whenever you want to listen to it, and the output's already there. So I do really like that setup of it. The final things to mention, I've already said this has Bluetooth, so our antenna's there, and it handles all the different codecs, including LDAC and Aptex HD. We've then got our power input, and there's no mains power switch, as seems to be the way for SMSL these days. So any sort of standby mode, etc., that's all handled from the front. There's no mains power switch on the back to force this into a complete power off. That might be good, that might be bad, I'll leave that up to you. From there, the final things to talk about are within the menu system, and that's to say that this has all the same sorts of menu functions and features that all the SMSL DACs do. There's a basic sound color function, which doesn't do very much. I talked about that in the SU9 Ultra video. It gives you the option to choose which outputs are running, so you can have the XLR and all the RCA, or all at once. I've already mentioned that when you're choosing the outputs, you can choose when the headphone output is running or not running. In other words, when the line outputs are running, the headphones aren't and vice versa. And so all the other features and functions in there, sorry, I forgot PCM filters, DSD filters, all of that's through the menu. It's all stuff that we've seen before, and it's not a big enough deal for me to go into detail on it because none of it makes a huge difference to the sound. It's very, very subtle tweaks at best, and the sort of thing that you'll probably want to have a play with and find out what works best for your taste and your system. And so where all this leaves us is that I think the PL200 is a brilliant little device. I love its size. I love its look. I think it sounds great. It does so many different things. As kind of a central point for a compact audio system where you've got CD playback, you've got DAC capabilities, you've got DDC capabilities if you want to, and you can plug in a pair of headphones if you're an occasional headphone user and you're not looking for the best possible sound, but you just want some good sound. I think the PL200 is fantastic for that. As I said, I'm not a fan of the teapot style lid, particularly the two part lid. I'm really not a fan of that, but I'm very happy to overlook it because everything else is done so well. And so I'm very comfortable giving the PL200 a solid recommendation. I think it's a great choice. So far, it looks like it might be a better choice than the Shanling ET3, unless there's some specific features in the ET3 that win me over in that review. 
And so for now, I hope this video has been helpful and useful in introducing you to the PL200 and or helping you make your decisions about it. And if you have found the video useful and interesting, please hit the like button and subscribe and ring the notification bell if you haven't already. For now though, let me leave it to the music. So happy listening, be kind to each other, and I'll see you here next time on Passion for Sound.